right. Thank you for tuning in on a Saturday. A couple of things I want to talk about. Training camp season. So I don't know. I'm at the age where, you know, you don't get too hyped up about training camp MVPs and all that type of malarkey because a lot of times training camp MVPs get cut, you know. So, but let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the Patrick Mahomes contract. So this is interesting because he signed a deal where he didn't try to break the bank, you know, metaphorically, he didn't try to go for the most dollars, he did a cap friendly deal to sign other players. And in that time, Tyreek Hill has left, Honey Badger has left, and Orlando Brown has left. And I think Honey Badger is a different situation. I don't think they really wanted him back. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I don't really understand that. He said he would have took as much money as Justin Reed, but the other two situations. Now, the Tyreek Hill cheetah situation is, you know, he was a little bit older. He was trying to break the brink. So I think that the Chiefs offered him, you know, a high $20 million deal, but he wanted to be the number one paid guy. And, you know, maybe the Chiefs were looking at it down the road like, we have this high play receiver who is 28 coming into, you know, the, the tail end of his prime, um, who everything that he does starts off with his electric speed and quickness. And as that, as he loses that, is he going to still be the same guy? And then uh, I mentioned earlier when Deshaun Watson lost Newt Hopkins, he became a better quarterback, you know, as he stopped focusing on that one guy and started really, you know, reading the field. Now, Tyreek Hill and Nuke are different because Nuke is a player that you throw it to even when he's covered. And Tyreek Hill gets separation. He flips coverages, things of that nature. But, you know, they have a different vibe in the, re the receiving core now. You know, you have Juju, uh, a player that they never really had in the slot. Uh, obviously, they have MVS, a, a body size that they've never really had the receiver's position with his uh, size and his speed. Uh, you have McCole Hardman, obviously, who wanted to be more involved in the offense. Uh, and you have the rookie that they drafted. So this is going to be and then you have Josh Gordon, who, you know, from all accounts is, you know, back in better shape. I think he's played a little heavy um, as he's aged, but you could have a diverse receiver room. Uh, instead of just having, you know, Kelsey and Hill. So this might be better for them. The Orlando Brown situation, you think that would have gotten taken care of. You know, they traded a first-round pick for this guy. You can't let him walk. Uh, you don't want to mess around this season, especially in the AFC West, where the Chargers have Bosa and Khalil Mack. The Raiders have Crosby and Chandler Jones. The Broncos, you know, their situation isn't as good, but this is a serious division. You don't want to be messing around, wasting time, having holdouts um, because of that dumb rule of how the tag is worked out. If you don't work it out before the season, you can't work it out during the season. I don't understand why they would put a rule like that in. If we can take care of the contract, let's take care of it. So he's probably going to hold out, maybe even miss a couple games and then come back in because I think you have to pay at least 10 games to get a full season of service or six games. And that's just not a good situation for the team. If he's going to be gone that long, you're a bigger guy already, and, you know, it's going to take him time to get back in football shape. Usually guys that don't come to training can't get hurt. It's just a nasty cycle. And, um, you know, these are quality years. You don't want to throw away a year, you know, wasting time. And, you know, it didn't really seem like they were too far off. So back to the original point, if I'm Patrick Mahomes and I took this discount, which is good. And he said uh, yesterday that I'm not really pocket watching other quarterbacks. I don't need to be the highest paid guy. I'm financially set for life. You know, me and my, my progeny, you know, <laughs> are, are set for life. So we're good. So I'm not really worried about it. But at the same time, if I did take less, you want other players taken care of. It's almost like the Tom Brady situation in New England because he took less, but they always let their players go. And if I'm, it, it, you know, I think after a while that starts to grate on the quarterback a little bit. Like, hey, if I'm doing this, I'm taking less. We need to sign guys. We need to be ready. Like, stop shopping at the, you know, the Dollar Tree, you know. But uh, we'll see. You know, maybe they get this situation taken care of. Um, 
The next thing that I thought that was really interesting was this Sean McVay. He says no new contract yet, but their talks are in a good place. There was rumor he was going to retire this offseason, him and Aaron Donald. And Aaron Donald came back for his last ride or whatever. I'm, I think he probably has a year. Maybe this might be his last year, you know, trying to defend his championship. But seems like he's tired. And McVay just got married, uh, he just had a child. And he's talked about wanted to be in his child's life, you know, and, you know, the life of a football coach is hard. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he retires, takes a sabbatical and come back. The only counterbalance to that is I think he likes being the coach of the Rams and that's LA's team. And if you leave, when you come back, are, is the LA team going to be available for you to coach or do you, are you going to have to move your family and your roots? Now I thought about this. If I was the owner of the Rams, would I be willing to let him take a, a sabbatical we hire an interim coach and whenever Sean McVay's ready to go back in we tell that coach you know thank you for your your, your, your thank you for all your contributions and Sean McVay is back and we're ready to roll with him so I don't know he's good enough to have those type of options but yeah I thought this was interesting with him because you know this is a team that pushed all the, the poker chips forward and if they end up losing a lot of their guys in one fell swoop they might be in a bad situation um, for a little while trying to, you know, pick up the pieces. Uh, what else do we have here in the NBA? Looks like my man, Monty Williams, everybody loves Monty, has agreed to a long-term extension. So it looks like they're bringing the band back in the Suns. You know, there was talk about Kevin Durant. And like I said, I read, you know, Brian Wittenhorst, who I think is probably more plugged in than Woj and Sham said, they didn't even offer Mikael Bridges. So teams are just low-balling, low-balling, low-balling when it comes to KD, and that makes sense to me because, you know, them making this seem like this should be the biggest trade ever for a 34-year-old who just got swept out of the playoffs in the first round. Those two things aren't congruous. So if I'm the Nets, I move on. If someone doesn't want to be there, again. But uh, for the Suns, for their situation, um, them getting Monty Williams back in the fold and bringing back the band. Uh, the only thing that would give you some intrepidation is that uh, how badly they kind of looked at the end. But again, there's rumors swirling that multiple players had COVID. Um, they just look lethargic. So it, it doesn't, it, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, the team that was running on all cylinders, um, their, their, you know, shot creation, especially Chris Paul and Booker, they just, they just look like they ran out of gas. So, you know, that wouldn't be surprising. So we'll see what they do next year. The West is so much better than it was last year. I don't think they can stand pat unless Aiden really, you know, sprouts his rings, spreads his rings, excuse me, and flies. But it might even be a situation where, I, you know, <laughs> that was a Freudian slip where he needs to sprout his rings. Can he actually get that good? You know, does he even have wings to spread? Is he... Does he need to be like maybe not on the same tier as Embiid and Joker, but a tier like right underneath it for them to actually be a contender? I'm I'm thinking yes. If you're gonna bring back the same bunch, I'm thinking yes. So that's an interesting thing to look at the KD situation. Nothing's happening. I don't know. A situation is boring. It it set the league on fire for a minute and. Uh, you thought it was going to stop everything and everybody just went about their business because um, it's just, it's just what they're asking for is too high and people are not willing to pay it. So what does it matter? All right, we'll go ahead and let me, let me look at college football. Let's see if there's any news there. Um, <laughs> I was talking last night with my friend. I was like, Lane Kiffin, man, he better find his way out of Ole Miss. This new game, the way it is now, and um, this this new game, the way it is now, and everything is NIL, and, uh, you know, players are really looking at it like that. Like, <clears throat> how can you compete with a Texas? How can you compete? In, in Mississippi, the poorest state in the union, how can you compete with a Texas? You know? So I wouldn't be surprised. The first 
solid opportunity. You know, Florida State has been something that's been up there, but it hasn't happened yet. And there's some rumors that, you know, that's what Deion Sanders wants. Deion keeps <laughs> systematically taking recruits from Florida State. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, if I'm him, I'm trying to get out of there. You know, he has a good team this year. He was able to get Jackson Dart in the transfer portal. But in the long term, especially with the teams that are coming into the SEC, especially with the rumors that Miami is going to come into the SEC, it's just going to be just too, it's going to be too hard for him to compete. So that's one thing, you know, he doesn't have the reputation as the Sarkeesian does. And I think it's just likability. People like Sarkeesian more than him, but I think he's just, I think he's a better actual coach. But for the long-term game of his future, it's interesting to see what he ends up doing because I just don't think it can happen in Ole Miss. You know, he's lamented uh, the, the um, NIL because it's just not somewhere he can compete. Maybe he can position himself as the transfer portal god um, because, you know, USC... You see USC here, they got all the players in the transfer portal, but remember, that's because they haven't recruited at the same level as the top schools have for a long time. So eventually they're going to get their actual recruit recruiting game up. So they're not going to need as many transfer portal guys. Uh, so then it becomes, you know, can Ole Miss be transfer portal you where, um, hey, I'm a five star uh, I got lost in the sauce because they they dra they they recruited other players and I'm not there. I go to Ole Miss to work it out, right? Can I can I become a hub like that, where hey Lane Kiffin can take care of you, professional coaching ties. Uh, if you're trying to get to the league, you're a five star, four star that gets lost in the sauce, transfer over there, we make it work. But uh, we'll see. I also read that Vegas. Let me see if I see it here. The number one bet to win the national championship is USC. USC national championship odds. So, um, so it was 45, one, 45 to one to start. And now it's uh, 25 to one. So yeah, USC schedule. So, I mean, if you pull up their schedule, Let's see here. If you pull up their schedule, there's, I mean, there's not a super way. You know, this is probably going to be their toughest game, uh, them versus Notre Dame, right? And a game like this is exactly when you want this game. End of the season, we've had all the time to gel. Um, we have our weapons down. It's going to be a match of wills. Notre Dame has, is supposed to have the best offensive line uh, that's uh, that college football has seen in the last four or five years. So it's going to be heavy run game versus uh, dynamic passing offense um, at USC. Um, so it, it is, it's going to be interesting if they can get through their schedule to begin with without some hiccups. Like I think this game versus Fresno State, and I'm not saying this because I'm a Fresno State alumnus, but this might be a trap game, you know, two games into the season, you know, still learning things. All these guys transferred in a team that you might not take seriously because you're looking down the road. Can you lose this game? I've heard um, Utah is supposed to be a really good game. So this might be another trap game, but if they can get through these games and then this is it, to end the season, I could see them in the college football playoffs. You know, I, I've heard that this is going to be Alabama's best team in a long time, and Will Anderson this and that, but they're, especially in their offensive room, they're bringing in a whole new receiver core, new running back. Um, I don't think this defense was a defense that you couldn't move the ball on. Now, you know, they didn't lose that many players to the draft, and they're going to get older and better, but uh, I, I'm not believing this hype that Alabama is supposed to be this all-time great team um, defensively. That's what they say every year with them. Um, I do think that there are some weaknesses there that they can exploit. Um, I think they really, you know, got to the playoffs last year on, on a razor's edge. There were a lot of games that they played in the SEC that were close. I think Auburn should have beaten them if they would have 
done some common sense things. They could have lost to Arkansas. Let's go Ole Miss. I mean, they end up winning that game big, but I think that was because Lane Kiffin was playing so drunk. Um, going for it on his 20, like they use the Chargers coach, and they, they like to play Madden, but I don't know. I'm I'm really hyped for this college football year. And yeah, USC 25 to 1. I don't if they can get past this early schedule, these two USC versus Stanford, USC versus Fresno State, and then the big one here at the end. I can see it. So all right, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Game is game. All right, thank you for watching this clip. Do me a favor, push the button, hit subscribe. Come on, man, push it. Come on, everybody up. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. You heard what she said. Man, do what's right. You heard her. Push the button. The game is a game. So what's up, man? What's up with you otherwise, you know? Uh, the game is a game. Always.